Chapter 16. Was this a fake? All people present looked at Jocelyn. Among them, most didn't know Jocelyn before. Hearing from others that she was the eldest daughter-in-law of Morrison family who was imprisoned three years ago, everyone was curious. The hall became quiet. Mr. Morrison looked at her with his meaningful eyes, do you understand painting and calligraphy? Jocelyn looked at the painting and smiled, not much. But I have made a little more research on the calligraphy and painting of Mr. Hawke. Arthur Morrison showed a contemptuous look beside her but said nothing because there were so many guests present. Jocelyn, a sorehead lady who was not spoiled at home, did she usually get in touch with antique paintings and calligraphy? She dared to show off in front of so many people. In order to attract others' attention, she even didn't care losing face. Mr. Morrison hesitantly to give up his position at the table and uttered two thick syllables, then, come and see. Jocelyn nodded and approached, this is the Jason Hawkes painting, Pine in the Sunshine, professionally speaking, Pine Pictures. Her words immediately made Mr. Morrison gentle. Although the gap between professionals and non-professionals was not so big, but only the two words had already pointed out the mystery of the painting. When Jason Hawke made this picture of mountain pine, he just became famous. In order to prevent the proliferation of counterfeit products, the pigment used in the eastern sunrise in his painting was made of powdered red perlite. The light reflected by the pigment particles under the sunlight just fell on a little squirrel in the left branch of the pine tree. Even if someone on the market imitated it, it would be impossible to do so, less alone to fully control the refraction of the light. Hey! I think in this painting the light is on that squirrel. Someone in the crowd asked, that's true. Jocelyn shook her head and pointed to the position of the light refraction. It's true that this light shines on the squirrel in this painting, but after so many years of weathering, red perlite should have been covered with a layer of dust. How can it refract light again? After finishing speaking, everyone was stunned, and gradually someone nodded their head and agreed. The old man frowned and he raised his hand to touch the sun in the painting. His eyebrows wrinkled slightly, at the same time, he had made a decision. Stan, put the picture away. He said calmly. Stan was so embarrassed that he was anxious to find a chink to infix. Impossible. Monica looked grim and she looked at Jocelyn unhappily. This is one of Jason Leonard's collections. How can he possibly collect a fake painting? Jason Leonard. The chairman of Leonard Group's consortium. Jocelyn looked at her with a surprised look. Didn't Mrs. Judd just say you have bought it from a businessman in Hong Kong? The reason why Jocelyn said that was only to prod Stan and Monica into action. Unexpectedly, Monica was so anxious that she got into her trap. At the moment that she realized she had made a mistake, Monica, face turned white immediately. The hall became noisy suddenly. Everyone knew that Jason Leonard, the chairman of Leonard Group's consortium, was died in a fire. Everything in his family was blocked and left for a state settlement. Stan's fiancé was Jason Leonard's only daughter, Joanne Leonard. Why did his former father-in-law's collection appear here today? Mr. Morrison looked grim and he looked at Stan unhappily, then asked, Stan, what do you mean by that? Grandpa, I just know you like this painting, so. Jocelyn stood beside the old man and interrupted Stan, warning, Mr. Judd, it doesn't matter whether the painting is true or not. It's just that us, the younger generation, want to show filial respect for the elder. Grandpa won't care too much about it. But if you get this painting in the wrong way and give it to Grandpa in this way, it will incur the mischief. Chapter 17. The Dispute Jocelyn's words made everyone present take a cold breath. Stan changed his face. 
Fearing that his grandfather would misunderstand him, he explained urgently, This is what I bought from Uncle Leonard before. It's really only because I know you like Jason Hawke's calligraphy and paintings, I take the liberty to bring it here. It's not of the questionable origin and I mean nothing. Grandpa, please don't misunderstand me. All right. Mr. Morrison rebuked him, and looked very angry. Mr. Hawke is honest and upright. He is a model of our politicians. You can't even tell the origin of this painting. What else can you explain? Then, don't mention it anymore. You put away this painting. Whether it is true or false, I shouldn't have seen it. Conduct yourself well. After saying that, the old man turned around and looked cold. Today, I have drunk the wedding wine. I have something else to deal with so I will leave first. Jocelyn and Arthur, you two stay here on the behalf of me. The most terrible thing for the military and political families was to receive the things of questionable origin. Jocelyn's words were not exaggerated. If they didn't pay attention to it, they would really die of that. It had been polite enough for the old man just to leave. As soon as the old man left, Stan looked angry and grim. Immediately. He and Monica made an excuse to let the crowd disperse and they went to the lounge in disgrace. When did you understand painting and calligraphy? Julia Morrison stood aside and looked at Jocelyn suspiciously. Who taught you that in your family? Jocelyn Tuna glanced at her and said, I like that. So I just have studied that a little more. What are you proud of? Julia Morrison was dissatisfied with her tone of voice when she spoke to her like this, you just understand the pictures and calligraphy, which is not worthy being proud. I am really reluctant to stand with you. Saying that, she walked away with her hand spoke to her like this, you just understand the pictures and calligraphy, which is not worthy being proud. I am really reluctant to stand with you. Saying that, she walked away with her hand lifting her skirt. Jocelyn longed for her to leave early. From the very beginning, her eyes had been following the direction that Stan and Monica went to. Isn't it said that the elder daughter-in-law were cowardly and could not behave in good manners? It seems that is not true. You were right. I think she's a wise person. If she was not here today and Mr. Morrison accepted the painting, it would be embarrassing to be reported when the Leonard family finished distributed their heritage and their other relatives found out that. The guests were chatting with each other. No one noticed Arthur, the disabled elder young master of Morrison family, was sitting in an unattractive corner and looking on this coldly. He put his hands on the blanket covered his knees with his fingers crossed and listened quietly to the gossip of the people around him. He couldn't help thinking of all her behaviors after Jocelyn came back. He felt more suspicious and asked the servant beside him. What about her? The servant was stunned. The young hostess. She was here just now. Perhaps, she is going to the lounge. Jocelyn followed Stan and Monica to get to the lounge. Since Monica appeared at the beginning of the wedding, she had noticed something on Monica that belonged to her and she had to brought it back. The sound of argument came out of the lounge. And Stan's tone was full of annoyance. I have just said we shouldn't meddle with the things of Leonard family. You have to show off. Grandpa has seen lots of things before. That's all right. Now we are getting into trouble through clever means. Monica was grieved and choked, I'm only thinking of you. You said that the business of Judd family could be so successful, depending more or less on the relationship with the old master of Morrison family. And I give away the painting to him with your consent. But I don't expect that the woman who came out halfway will disturb our plan. If you want to blame someone, you should blame her. The two were all good at shirking their responsibilities. 
Their behaviors of stealing things from Leonard family and blaming others for revealing the truth, made Jocelyn could not help sneering. Who? Stone's cold voice came out in the room and then he looked towards the door. Chapter 18. Loved in a Fallen City When Jocelyn heard the interrogation, her heart did a flip. She took a deep breath after settling down, pushed the door in and said generously, It's me. The look of Stan and Monica changed after seeing the visitor clearly, but for the sake of face, Stan had to hold the anger to great. Why did the sister-in-law come? Jocelyn looked at him and asked as if did not know. I just heard you were arguing. Marriage is a happy event. Why are you still so unhappy? It was obvious that she knew what the thing was, but deliberately asked, which made Stan look worse. Sister-in-law should have misheard. We just spoke a little louder and didn't dispute. Stan barely kept calm. When he looked at Jocelyn, there was contempt that could not be concealed in his eyes. In his eyes, Jocelyn was just an ordinary woman who was not spoiled and without power and status. If nothing happens, the sister-in-law had better go out. I and my wife still have something to say. Are you a couple? Jocelyn looked at him carefully, her eyes became cold suddenly, and then said as if thinking of something. I remember that I saw the TV news that Mr. Judd offered a reward of $5 million to find his fiancé yesterday. Today you're marrying another new love. I don't know how your fiancé whose whereabouts was still unknown would feel if she knew it. What do you mean? Stan's look changed. It doesn't mean anything. Jocelyn slowly approached. I just want to tell Mr. Judd and Mrs. Judd some truth. For example, if people walk too much at night, people will encounter ghosts. Another example is that tit for tat, it is a matter of course. Before, in order to speak conveniently, only a lamp with weak light was turned on in the lounge. The light was shining on her face at the moment, her facial features were indistinct. The familiar look and resentful expression were imprinted in Stan's eyes, he immediately thought of a person and took a sudden step backward. His face turned white. Monica didn't know what happened and said unhappily, What do you mean? Don't play tricks to mess up secretly. You bully people depend on you are a member of the Morrison family. You. Before she had finished, the cold wind swept across her neck. Monica suddenly covered her neck with hand and looked at Jocelyn incredulously. There was an obvious red trace on her neck, which was made by the necklace. Jocelyn held tightly the pendant inlaid with emeralds. She deftly pressed a veiled button by her fingers. The veiled button was turned on with a crisp, ding. She took the necklace out of Monica's hand without hesitation. A loud and powerful word rang out in the room. This necklace is the same as the paintings and calligraphy. They are all stolen by you. What qualifications do you have to hold them? Jocelyn's look was cold, her eyes sparkled. Stan and Monica were so frightened that they couldn't say a word. This necklace called, Love in a Fallen City, was named after Joanne Leonard's own name. Except for Joanne Leonard, no other person can open the lock catch that with delicate design so quickly. In order to wear this necklace at the wedding, Monica even looked for all the skilled craftsmen in Yanjing. Stan's face looked tense and his lips were shaking, how do you know that? Jocelyn clutched the necklace, stood upright and looked coldly at the two panicked people in front of her. Despite her figure was very thin, her momentum was so powerful, she sneered. Do you believe that the death can be resurrected? Her words made the pupils of Stan and Monica shrink violently, they were quite frightened. At the moment, Jocelyn looked at them with eyes like ghosts. It was extremely deep and cold, as like ghosts. It was extremely deep and cold. Chapter 19 Who the hell are you? Jocelyn held the chain tightly and stood straight. She coldly looked at the two panicked people in front of her. Although she looked very thin, she was very powerful and then she sneered, Do you believe that a dyed person can be reborn? 
Just one sentence had made Stan and Monica extremely frightened, even their eyes were full of fear. At this moment, Jocelyn just like a ghost, looked at him in her cold and deep eyes. Don't purposely make a mystery. In a panic, Monica grabbed the sleeve of Stan and hid behind him all the time. What the hell are you going to do? Stan looked at her motionlessly, as if he wanted to see another person on her face, and then he asked in a trembling voice. Who the hell are you? Hearing this, Jocelyn sneered, Joanne let me tell you that everything has its cause and effect. It's not true that you won't get the retribution, even if you do something evil. It is only because it is not the time for you to be punished. Now I am going to take her things away. After saying that, she left the lounge. Then, the sound of table and chair rubbing on the ground was particularly harsh, accompanied by the sound of Monica, exclamation. The men and women seemed to be so frightened that they both fell down. Walking to the door of the lounge, Jocelyn laughed at herself that the man she had loved for three years was such a rubbish. Now recalling her past, she thought she was really silly at that time. When she just came out of the lounge with the corner of her skirt in her hands, there was a cool voice coming out behind her. Jocelyn? In the shelter of the potted landscape was the black axle. The man's handsome face was faintly hid in the green leaves and flowers. She didn't know how long he had been waiting here. He didn't appear until now. Jocelyn felt stiff on her back, and after a few seconds she turned around, reluctantly showing a smile. When have you come and why are you here? Arthur, sitting in the wheelchair with his hands overlapping, looked very cold and did not answer her questions. If I remember correctly, it should be the first time that you meet Stan. But your hostility towards him is too obvious. Jocelyn shivered. The man's eyes were dark, deep and sharp. Only glancing at her, it seemed that he had known what she was thinking about, so who the hell are you? After a few seconds of meditation, Jocelyn slowly relaxed herself and loosened her hands which was holding her skirt and then she wondered. What do you mean by that? Of course, I'm your wife, Jocelyn. Who else can I be? Arthur apparently did not believe it, and he looked more cold and grim. Jocelyn pinned her palms, and the pain made her look very aggrieved. Since we didn't enter the banquet hall, Stan had looked down on me. I am your wife. But he made me lose face in front of so many people. Shouldn't I still respect him and be polite to him? She said that angrily and innocently. It was comprehensible that women were all narrow-minded. Arthur looked at her with his sharp eyes and said, Besides, his fiancée has just died but he is anxious to marry another woman. And he announced that he would offer a reward for looking for her wife but he is holding the wedding ceremony here. All of these are enough to show that he is greedy and hypocritical. Moreover, he intends to give away a painting without the clear origin to grandfather. If something happened, it would be benefit to the political opponents of Morrison family. He has set the trap to frame Morrison family again and again, so that grandpa has been too angry and has left. I am extremely angry so I just frighten him as the punishment. In front of the rise and fall of such a large family as Morrison family, any individual interest was not worth mentioning. Jocelyn's words pointed out the essence. Although she gave an irrelevant answer, the words were enough to distract Arthur's attention. Arthur frowned thoughtfully. After a while, he looked at Jocelyn and said in his indifferent tone, You'd better really think so. Of course, I think so. Jocelyn looked very sincere and then she said. Let me take you to the lobby. If you don't show up for so long, mum and others should worry about you. No. 
Arthur avoided her outstretched hands, and then with the sound made by the axle, he left away. Seeing that his figure slowly fade away, Jocelyn finally get relieved, and the sweat in her hands was all cold. It was really awkward to deal with Arthur. Time. When she just came out of the lounge with the corner of her skirt in her hands, there was a cool voice coming out behind her. Jocelyn. In the shelter of the potted landscape was the black axle. The man's handsome face was faintly hid in the green leaves and flowers. She didn't know how long he had been waiting here. He didn't appear until now. Jocelyn felt stiff on her back, and after a few seconds she turned around, reluctantly showing a smile. When have you come and why are you here? Arthur, sitting in the wheelchair with his hands overlapping, looked very cold and did not answer her questions. If I remember correctly, it should be the first time that you meet Stan. But your hostility towards him is too obvious. Jocelyn shivered. The man's eyes were dark, deep and sharp. Only glancing at her, it seemed that he had known what she was thinking about, so who the hell are you? After a few seconds of meditation, Jocelyn slowly relaxed herself and loosened her hands which was holding her skirt and then she wondered. What do you mean by that? Of course, I'm your wife, Jocelyn. Who else can I be? Arthur apparently did not believe it, and he looked more cold and grim. Jocelyn pinned her palms, and the pain made her look very aggrieved. Since we didn't enter the banquet hall, Stan had to the banquet hall, Stan had looked down on me. I am your wife. But he made me lose face in front of so many people. Shouldn't I still respect him and be polite to him? She said that angrily and aggrievedly. It was comprehensible that women were all narrow-minded. Arthur looked at her with his sharp eyes and said, Besides, his fiancée has just died but he is anxious to marry another woman. And he announced that he would offer a reward for looking for her wife but he is holding the wedding ceremony here. All of these are enough to show that he is greedy and hypocritical. Moreover, he intends to give away a painting without the clear origin to grandfather. If something happened, it would be benefit to the political opponents of Morrison family. He has set the trap to frame Morrison family again and again, so that Grandpa has been too angry and has left. I am extremely angry so I just frighten him as the punishment. In front of the rise and fall of such a large family as Morrison family, any individual interest was not worth mentioning. Jocelyn's words pointed out the essence. Although she gave an irrelevant answer, the words were enough to distract Arthur's attention. Arthur frowned thoughtfully. After a while, he looked at Jocelyn and said in his indifferent tone, You'd better really think so. Of course, I think so. Jocelyn looked very sincere and then she said, Let me take you to the lobby. If you don't show up for so long, Mum and others should worry about you. No. Arthur avoided her outstretched hands, and then with the sound made by the axle, he left away. Seeing that his figure slowly fade away, Jocelyn finally get relieved, and the sweat in her hands was all cold. It was really difficult to deal with Arthur. Chapter 20, Playing in this exciting way A query failed. Although Arthur let her go, his doubts were deeper. Jocelyn was always cowardly, and unable to speak clearly, but just now she was well organized. From small personal grievances to big family rise and fall, she analyzed step by step with full of confidence. With such a glib tongue and a ready response, she wasn't like the timid woman she used to be. He was afraid that they would have to find out what happened to her these three years in prison. On the other side, the door of the bride's dressing room was closed. We must have been tricked by this woman, who was trying to scare us by playing the devil on purpose. 
It was impossible to come back from the dead. Monica thumped the table angrily. Stan, isn't she the wife of your godfather's eldest son? What's her problem with you? Why does she scare us? Stan, who had been sitting on the sofa since his return, said nothing, and then raised his head slowly, as if he had been awakened by the words of Monica. He said, problems. Before the wedding, at the door, it was really a slip of the tongue that he humiliated her. Was it because of this? Stan immediately told Monica what had happened, and she, figured it out, and said in rage. It was no wonder that she was against us again and again. Because of such a small matter, she was aggressive, and it was no wonder that she was neglected in Xiao family. Monica gnashed for a moment, no, I can't bear that. What are you going to do? After whispering, Stan frowned. Stan was reluctant initially, but he was persuaded by Monica. He agreed finally. Jocelyn showed up at the party and Selena Alja changed her attitude and was nice to Jocelyn. The rumor that the eldest daughter-in-law was neglected in Xiao family was proved false. People who had looked down upon her, looked up at her with new eyes and a number of people came forward to court her. Offering help in time of need is difficult, but adding flowers to the cake is easy. Looking at these people's hypocritical faces, Jocelyn sneered in the heart, but she didn't show it and only showed her civility before them. All's fish that comes to her net. As time went on, she drank quite a lot. Jocelyn seems to be drinking a lot. Hearing a concerned voice, Jocelyn looked up and it turned out to be Monica, maid of honor. Not much. I can't drink very well. Jocelyn humbly said. In her previous life, it was no exaggeration to say that she never got drunk. I happen to be living here these two days. Jocelyn, if you don't mind, you can go to my room for a rest. Jocelyn looked at her warily. The eyes of the maid of honor were evasive. Well, Monica wasn't feeling well and couldn't come out in person, so she asked me to come out and take a look. I see. Jocelyn pretended to let her guard down, well, is your room far from here? It is not far from here. It's only two steps from the banquet hall. You come with me. Okay. Jocelyn left the ballroom with Monica, maid of honor. She wanted to figure out what trick Monica was playing. It was not very far indeed. When she reached the door, she was about to turn round to say something, but the door opened suddenly. A hand reached out, took her by the arm, and drew her in. Before she knew it, the door slammed. The room was dimly lit. Jocelyn was pushed to the bed by the irresistible force, and then she smelled the strong smell of alcohol. She struggled and screamed, but her mouth